Hi there and welcome to another PSC Tuts Plus Spoon Fed Photoshop tutorial. I'm Gavin Steele and in today's tutorial I'm going to take you through how to create a realistic fountain pen that can be used as an icon on a website or on your desktop or anything like that. The original tutorial is by Asher Abassi and do check it out over at psd.tutsplus.com. Here's the final image that we're going to be creating. It's a nice little short and stumpy fountain pen and we're going to create this from scratch in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to do is load up Photoshop and create a new file 512 by 512. We're then going to head over to our pen tool, P on the keyboard, and we're going to make sure we've got shapes layer selected which is the first option up here on the left. We're going to keep the color at black and we can change that a little bit later on and we're going to create our shape. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to come across like so come down and then straight back up. Now it's a little bit fat so I'm going to come down to my direct selection tool and what we can do is we can click on these points and we can start to adjust them adjust them sorry. So I'm going to select these top two and I'm going to move them up just to make it a little bit taller I'm going to grab this one just bring it in touch okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my pen tool and I'm going to add a point and I'm going to add it pretty much in the middle and again I'm just going to drag that down and then click away just to create a slightly rounded edge down at the bottom there and once you've got that shape the way you want it, we're going to double click on that layer. That's going to bring up our layer styles. And in our layer styles, we're going to add a gradient overlay. We're going to have it set to normal, 100. And then we're just going to play around with our gradient here. Our first color, let me just bring these over, is going to be 3C, 3C, 3C. We're then going to create a second color pretty close to that one. And that's going to be 6F. 6F, 6F. Then somewhere in the middle we're going to have some white. Then we're going to have another grey. I'm going to set that to B0, B0, B0. And then another colour. And that's going to be 7B, 7B, 7B. And then finally we're going to have this go to black and click on OK. Now, I'm just going to move this over and have a look at how it looks in this band. We need to make the white a little bit more central. But apart from that, that looks pretty good. I'm going to click on OK. Make sure you've got it set to linear. You've got a line with layer checked. The angle we're going to set to zero. And we're going to reduce the scale right down to 95%. And then we can click on OK. And we should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now we've got a little bit of edging here, a little bit of scaling. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on that and grab our pen tool. And all you have to do is click off that layer and that will disappear. And then we can zoom back out and you can see it looks pretty smooth. So if you get that edging, it's just because you've still got that path selected and Photoshop is rendering that and it looks quite edgy on the actual page. Now, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit. OK. We're now going to draw our body for our pen. So this is going to be like the base of our, fountain tip, of our fountain pen. And we're going to draw our base over it now. So again, we're going to use the pen tool. Create a new layer if you want, just to separate them out. Again, using black. And we're just going to go over this shape here, maybe just a little bit to the left. and then come down come back up okay I'm gonna right click on that layer and I'm gonna come down to clear layer styles just so we've got our black or our dark color for our layout we don't want any of those styles applied just yet and then what I'm gonna do is come back over to my direct selection tool and just going to check these angles, that looks pretty good. 
I'm going to add another point again down at the bottom. And again, I'm just going to move that down. Touch like so. Click off the layer. Nice little round bit there, and that looks pretty good. So let's label that layer. And we're going to call it body. Now we need to create the reflections for our body layer. So we're going to create a new layer. It's going to be right above our body layer. And in this new layer, we're going to command click on our body layer, and that's going to make it a selection. We're going to fill that selection, G on the keyboard to bring up your bucket. We're going to change to white, and we're going to fill that selection with white. We can command D to deselect that layer now. And then we're going to press command T, and we're going to free transform this, and we're going to reduce the width down to about 75%. Okay, I'm going to keep mine about 80 for now, and I'm going to hit enter to apply that. Now what we need to do is we need to go to filter, filter, blur, motion blur, and then we're going to set our motion blur to about an angle of zero, and we're going to reduce the opacity down just a touch to about 18, something like that and click on OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to re reduce the opacity down to around 50%, somewhere like that. Double click on the layer, head over to Gradient Overlay, have it set to Normal, 100%. We're going to have it going from black to white, linear is all fine, 90%, but we're going to increase this to 150, our scale. And click on OK. We can see that just coming down our pen. And you can increase the opacity a bit if you want the reflection to be a little bit brighter, but I think that looks pretty good around 50 and 60 percent. All right, we're going to work on the top half of our pen now, so I'm just going to bring this down like so, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And again, let me grab all of these layers, just move them all down so we've got enough space up at the top and then I can zoom back in on that area. So we're going to work on this top half, and I'm going to grab the pen tool. This time we can have it set to white, that's fine, and we're going to work on our neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this corner here, we're going to come up and in a bit, come across, back down, and back across, and we're going to call this neck. And we're going to apply some layer styles. The first one that we're going to do is going to be inner glow. So double click on our layer. Let's head down to inner glow. We're going to have it set to overlay. 75% for our op opacity. Noise is still on zero. The color is going to be black. Softer and edge is fine. We're going to increase our choke to 21 and our size to 17. We're going to change our contour. And we're going to change it to this one on the top right hand corner here. And that's going to be our Gaussian. And let's just have a look. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we need to add our color overlay. And we're going to set this to normal. We're going to change this to a grey colour. It's going to be 8F, 9, 9E. And we're going to leave that on 100%. And we can get an idea for how that's starting to look if we move this out of the way. And that looks pretty good. I'm just going to have a look at my choke size. Just maybe reduce that just a touch. Like so. Play around with that and click on OK. Now just like we did before with our reflections, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to command select our neck. We're going to fill this layer with white. Command D select. Command T to bring up free transform. Reduce our width. Just going to bring that down just a touch. Click on enter. And then we're going to apply our gradient overlay to that layer style. So let's double click, bring up our layer style. Okay, before we do that, Set it to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. We should be able to use the 18 pixels 
from before and it should tie in pretty nicely. It might be slightly just off, but you can increase that or decrease that however you feel. But I think it looks pretty good. Click on OK. And you might feel that the light's a little bit too strong on the top and you can just reduce the opacity down just a touch. Okay, next thing we're going to do is create a little band that's going to go across our join here between our neck and our body. So again we can grab our pen tool, create a new layer, just going to zoom in a touch, like so. And my band's going to start here, come across, it's going to come down, come across, and finish off like so. Now, if you, again you're getting the repeated layer styles from your other layers, just right click, go down to clear layer style and you should just get a plain color like so. Now, let me just click off that and come back. So the strip looks, it looks um, quite smooth, but it's actually got a lot of this aliasing going on, okay, which can create a lot of problems. So to fix that, what we need to do is, we need to right click on this layer, we're gonna go to rasterize the layer, and now we're gonna go up to filter, and we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe 0 0.5, click on OK, back up to filter, and we're going to go down to sharpen, and then we're going to sharpen edges, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply some more layer styles. So head up to your layer styles palette again by double clicking on that layer. We're going to apply an inner shadow, have that set to normal, have it set on white, we're going to have it on 45%, we're going to have our angle, not use global light, and we're going to reduce that down to 90%. One for our distance, zero, and then one for our size. And again, we're going to change that contour, and that looks pretty good. Then we're going to move on to, <coughs> excuse me, a gradient overlay. Set that to normal, 100%, and we're going to play around again could have saved that previous um, gradient, but I didn't. So we're going to do it the long way. 3C, 3C, 3C. That next color is 6F, 6F, 6F. Then we've got white. Then we've got B0, B0, B0. And then we've got 7B, 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 and then finally black. Click on OK. That looks pretty good. Click on OK. Let's have a look. We need to change our angle, set that to 0, and reduce the scale to 95. And let's have a look. Okay, it's not bad. Just need to increase our white area. So I'm just going to scale it just a little bit more, like so. Come back in, going to add a white and just push. Bring that black in a bit more. Okay, so I'm just adjusting the placement of these. And in fact, I could bring out that white again and just have a look at how that fills in. But I'm going to add it back. And then click on OK. And once it's in, you can still move it inside, going to click on OK, and I'm just going to reduce its opacity just a touch, actually I'm going to put that back up to 100%. Okay, so there's our little, our little rim, let's have a look 
when we zoom out how that looks. And actually, it ties in pretty nicely. So let's just zoom back out to 100% and bring that over. But we're not quite finished with it yet. The next thing we need to do is create a new layer. And I'm going to call this Shadow. And we're going to place it below our little strip. Okay, command select our strip layer, make sure you have the shadow layer selected. Then we're going to go to modify in our selection and we're going to go to expand. We're going to choose two pixels, click on OK. And then what we're going to do is fill that selection with black. Then we can deselect it, command D. And we can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and have it set to 0 0.5 pixels and click on OK. And that's going to create this kind of little shadow and this little edge and it really make that little, um, that little area highlight and stand out. Now we could have added a little bow in the middle there um, but for now I'm going to go with it as it is and I think it looks, it looks pretty good. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is is apply um, some, some of the overflowing uh, shadow. Yeah, so basically a part of the shadow is overflowing on the pen's body and to eliminate that the first thing we need to do is we need to command click on our body layer. So come down here and hold down command and select our body layer. Then we need to command shift click on our neck layer. It's going to add that to our selection. And we're going to go to selection, modify, contract and we're going to use one pixel and click on OK. Then with the shadow layer selected which we have here at the top we can press command shift one and delete command Z that I'm sorry And with that selection, we need to press Command, Shift and I to invert it. And then we can just hit the Delete key and then Command D. It's going to deselect and you can see now we don't have that overflowing. We just have the tight edge around our band. Right, the next thing to do is one of the harder parts. We're going to grab, grab the top layer all the way down this layer, V on the keyboard, I'm just going to move this down, come back in and just zoom in the top. We're going to create the nib of our fountain pen and it's a little bit fidgety, I'm not perfect at drawing with the pen tool but we're going to have a go. Grab our pen tool, make sure you've got black selected and we're basically going to create a square shape with a little point at the top. So I'm going to start on this edge and I'm going to come up to here I'm going to come in and up a little bit. Like so. Come somewhere in the middle. Maybe alt click on that last point. Again, I'll click, come back down. And then close it off. Now, I know that looks horrible, so what we can do is we can come back into our direct selection tool and we can click on these points just try and make this look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just going to bring these points up. Bring that over. Okay, 
I actually think that's a little bit too high. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I know it's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad at all. I'm just going to click off. So we get the general idea that the pen, the nib's going to come up here and then rotate and get this little curve. This curve's a little bit sharper than over here, but it's not bad. You can spend a lot of time on this. For the second tutorial, I'm going to move on to the next step. Double click on that layer. We're going to give it a gradient overlay, make sure it's set to normal, 100%, and we're going to apply that gradient one more time. First color, exactly the same as before, 3C, 3C, 3C. Next color was 6F, 6F, 6F. Then we had white. B0, 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 followed by 7B, 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 and then finishing off black. Click on OK. That's pretty good. Click on OK. Let's have a look at how that looks. Change the angle down to zero. OK, it's not too bad. Maybe reduce the scale. Click on OK, and then let's click away. All right, and let's zoom out a little bit. Bring that over. OK, I'm going to go back in. Make sure I get the right layer. Back down to my gradient overlay tool. Uh, I'm just going to add an extra white. Try and get that. I'm just looking at the top here as I adjust where my white is, just trying to position it somewhere in the middle. Just having these just fade a little bit more. Click on OK. OK, that looks a little bit better. Right now, we're going to add the little black areas where the ink's going to come out of. We're going to create a new layer. I'm going to zoom in on the end of this nib, like so. Going to grab my rectangular marquee tool on this new layer and I'm going to select just below. Going to bring this down to about here. G on the keyboard, fill it with black. And then again, I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool, create a new layer, create a nice little circle. Fill that with black, deselect, okay, and then on this layer I'm going to create a mask, it's going to reveal all, come over to my gradient tool, we're going to have black to white, and then we can pull that down like so, so we just lose the end of our nib, like so. And you could even just quickly grab your brush, still set on black, make sure it's nice and soft. Just to help fade that out. And then when you zoom out, you get a nice nib effect. Now mine's quite fat, my circle here. Yours doesn't have to be that fat, obviously, as you play around with it.
create a little um, little strip just like we did earlier for this join in the pen. I'm just going to come down to my background layer down here, and I'm going to set that to darkish grey. Okay. Now I'm not sure why I'm getting this little bounding uh, breaking out of our edge here. So I'm going to just quickly run through my layers. So it's this layer here. I'm just going to grab my pen tool. Uh, this time I'm going to change my pen tool to just the paths. I'm going to select this area. And then just mask that out so we don't get that effect going down our side, that kind of blurringness. Right, as I said, we're going to work on the stripe part up here. And again, grab our pen tool. This time, make sure you go back to our shapes. And just going to click here. Come across. Come down. Come across. Maybe come in a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, it's a little bit short, but don't worry about that because we're going to add that edge. Now, double click on that layer and we're going to apply a couple of effects to this. Remember, before we did this last time, we right clicked on our layer. We went to rasterize the layer. Then we headed up to blur, Gaussian blur. 0 0.5, click on OK, filter, sharpen, and then sharpen edges. And then we applied our layer styles. So let's move that up. And the first was our inner shadow. We had that set to normal, white, 45%. The angle is 90. Our distance was down to 1. Zero for choke, but one for size. Change your contour, and that's okay. Gradient overlay next. Have that set to normal, 100. And let's do this one last time. Double click on our color here. And we should know them by now, 3C, 3C, 3C. Six 6F, 6F, 6F. I would love it if in Photoshop, when you double clicked, the cursor automatically filled in the area down here, or at least loaded that ready to be filled. There's our white, B0, 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 and the last color, 7B, 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 and then black. Click on OK. Let's have a quick look, make sure you set it down to zero. Looks good, we get to scale it. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click on OK. And we need to create a new layer for our shadow, if you remember, it's gonna bring that below, make sure we call that a shadow. Command select that layer. Go to mod uh, Selection, Modify, Expand. We add it on two pixels, click on OK. Now with that selection, we're gonna change this back to black. Fill the selection in with black. Then we're gonna go up to Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur, 0 0.5, click on OK. And again, some of that has overspilled some of our selection there. So what we need to do is we need to Command Click this layer here, 
going to add our nib. So command shift and grab that selection. Command shift I and then command deselect. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And the last thing to do is we're just going to stylize a little bit. So we're going to right click on our pen layer and we're going to set that and duplicate our layer set. So let's grab all of this. Shift, Command G. I'm going to call this pen. Then I'm going to duplicate that. Turn this one off so we've always got a copy. And then we're going to apply some layer styles to this group. Okay, with that new selection, Command E, we're going to merge that group down. Command T, I'm just going to rotate it maybe 45 degrees. Hit Enter. Double click on that layer. And then our final few little layer styles, we're going to do a drop shadow. Set that to multiply black, reduce that to 60%. 135 for our global light and our angle. 5 is fine, 0 is fine. Increase the distance to 8. And that shape down there for our contour is fine. Next we need is an inner shadow. We're going to set our inner shadow to soft light. Make sure it's on black, reduce that down to 25. Our angle, we're not going to use global light, we're going to use minus 45 degrees. 5 is fine, 0, and then we're going to increase that to 10. Change our contour to this bottom left one down here. 0 is fine. Finally, a color overlay. Going to set this color to soft light and then a nice purpley color 96A2 E2. Click on OK and then reduce that down to about 30%. Click on OK. Let's move this to the side and have a look. We've got this nice little colored paley blue kind of effect or pale purple. Click on OK. And finally, just set the scene. We're going to come down to our background layer. I'm going to grab a gradient tool. I'm going to select my first color. I'm just going to steal this color from over here. It's 838B96. And then for my outside color, I'm going to go for a dark purple 2C3240. Click on OK. I'm going to select the second of our options up here once we've selected our foreground and background colors and come down to the middle and then just drag out like so and there you've got it you've got your little icon fountain pen I'm just gonna zoom in so we can have a little look so that's it at a hundred percent short and stubby my one but I think it looks pretty cool you could use that in convert it into an icon to use on your desktop or you can use it on a website or anything like that so that's the final uh, image on our tutorial. Thanks very much to Asher Abassi on how to create a realistic fountain pen with his tutorial over at psd.tutsplus.com. I've been Gavin Steele, and I hope you enjoyed that screencast.